Hello everybody and welcome to the first battle report in a little while and the first battle report in my new house. I've been joined today by Robin who's uh, had to travel less far today to where I live now and today we are playing a Hail Caesar game using uh, version 2 and we are playing uh, a War of the Roses battle and we are just going to use the vanilla rules that are in the new Hail Caesar rulebook using the late medieval um, army lists that are at the back of the book and all of the new sort of additional rules they've put in. So we won't be using um, the house rules and the document that we've um, we've used in the past. So all of our commanders are going to have the same strategy rating, no special rules, and um, yeah, none of the the funny little things that we've introduced. This is so we can hopefully give an idea to people who may be thinking about playing Hail Caesar how it plays um, as a, a sort of vanilla system without having to do any house ruling at all, and also to anybody who's interested. If you're interested in an in-depth review of the Hail Caesar rulebook for version 2, then you'll find a link to that down below and you should be able to click up here for it. Otherwise, what we'll do, we'll roll through the scenario, we'll roll through the armies and then we'll get cracking. Okay, so for today's battle, we've set up a bit of a, a moorland that's uh, maybe just outside of a town. Robin is playing using the Duke of Suffolk. Yep. The Suffolk. Duke of Suffolk, the Earl of Essex, and, and, Baron Burners. and Baron Burners. I am using a complete Neville faction, which is led by the Kingmaker himself, his uncle William Neville, and his brother John Neville. So for this game, we haven't used uh, the point system that's in there. I still, I still can't do it. I can't. We can't do points. Um, but what we have done is we've simply just gone with how many standard units we both have and how many small units we both have. Um, we count out. So we've got 13 units each um, divided between three separate commanders. Now we are going to be playing the rules as suggested in the rulebook and the scenario that we are playing is scenario two, which can be found on page 183, which is an approach battle. One side begins deployed on the table whilst the opposing side moves on from the opposite edge. So as you can already see, the uh, the Suffolk forces are deployed um, along here. I'll get Robin to go through this in a minute. Uh, in the first turn, which I have, my army will enter from this board edge here. As you can see, we've got open fields. Um, the lichen that's here between the fields does not hamper movement or act as cover. It's simply there to look nice. However, these woods and the walls and the thickets of trees obviously do count as obstacles, as do the walls for these plots of land over here. So some nice wide open space for us to hopefully get some combat in and some cavalry moving. One of the special rules for this scenario is that we can both keep a single unit in a single unit, sorry, a single division in reserve, which can move on from turn two from either our own table edge or halfway up the board in our own half of the table. So um, that's going to be a bit of an interesting situation if someone chooses to do that. If you wanted to come up with a quick story for this, then essentially it's probably that the Nevilles are coming into East Anglia and Suffolk's moved to meet them and uh, we're on his turf. Um, so there we go. As you can see in the middle here, we did just have to put a little bit of flavour in. I chucked a broken cart down and the next thing I knew, Robin had chucked down some people who were looting it and packing a mule with it. So uh, they're on the table. They are they add no victory points or anything like that to the game now the victory conditions that we've come up with for this scenario are very simply that we're going to be playing um, two victory points for a destroyed unit and one victory point for a unit that's shaken at the end of the game we will be using the broken divisions rule um, obviously if an entire army breaks um, then victory will go to the other side so we'll um, we'll get started and we'll talk about the armies Right, Robin, so who's the army commander? That's Essex. Yeah, so Essex is bringing the bulk of the forces, so he was yep. an earl, he, he has the money. Is he your general? He's going to be the general. Yep, okay. Um, so he's brought with him two units of bill and bow, one of which is deployed there. Yeah. Uh, a cannon, which I understand in the vanilla rules, there is no rules for cannon blowing up. No. Good. No. I think, my, I think the, one of the things I've bought can, though. Uh, then small unit of hand gunners and a 
small unit of men at arms because they're only small units. Yes, we should probably say. So if you're used to watching the normal battle reports that I put up, men at arms um, um, in our little sort of house rule version can deploy as a standard unit. In the list in the back of the, the rule book, they can't. They can only be taken as a small unit. Um, so we shall see how much we like that. Yeah. And then another unit in column ready to... That's Bill and Bo as well, uh, isn't it? Yeah, Bill and Bo, just straight, straight up the board. Okay, and then over on the corner here, got you've got some, some cavalry. Yeah, some uh, scourers. Okay, so, so they're, they're medium gonna... cavalry in this one as a small unit. Yep, and then what do we have so over Suffolk here? Suffolk just brought his small retinue of two units of Bill and Bo and his personal... Yes, the unit that, I, that runs around the board normally causing me a lot of hassle. Yeah, they're, he, they're Suffolk there. doesn't mind them only coming as small because he can only afford small units anyway. So, <laughs> so the rules... And then... Waiting off table is Essex's nephew, Baron Berners. Um, waiting off table, and he's got quite a large retinue with him. He's got three Bill and Bow and a small unit of just longbowmen. So you've got your whole you're holding four units off the table that are going to come on in reserve. Yeah, and I'm sorry, okay. just like that. All right, okay, interesting. Well, what I will do, I'm not going to go through my army straight away now. I'll move my army on, and hopefully it's all going to come on the first turn. Um, if it doesn't, then we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, and then when I've got my army on the board, I'll roll through it, and I'll explain what's going on. Otherwise, um, I think that's it. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get on with it. Oh, we're going to play for six turns. Yeah. Six turns, um, and uh, we'll roll for a seventh. Um, but let's get on with it. It's the uh, Neville turn one. Right, so that went pretty well for me. All three of my divisions came onto the board. Um, so let's go through them. Now, um, I should just say that the rules for um, for this battle in the scenario stated that I could only make one move onto the board. So that's why everybody is formed up into a, a nice long line. I think Robin was potentially hoping that some of my units would either blunder or fail to come on. Uh, that's not been the case. So let's roll through what we've got. So on this side here, we have the Earl of Warwick himself. He is leading two units of Bill and Bow, two small units of Men at Arms, and he has a single medium cannon with him. Next to him, we have his brother, John Neville, the Marquis Montague. He's bought two units of Bill and Bow. Um, he's got his little um, cousin here, Henry Neville, leading a small unit of foot knights of men-at-arms. And he's brought with him a rebuilder quin, because I really want to see what this does. Hopefully it will do something. On the left flank, um, we have over here William Neville, Lord Falkenberg. He's the uncle of these two over here. Uh, we have three units of Bill and Bow and a single unit of scurriers, which are sort of making their way towards the, the Suffolk line. Now, in this version of Hail Caesar, longbows have a range of 20 inches, but I've already measured and I am hugely out of range. So we're not going to waste loads of time going through everything. We'll just get on with Suffolk turn one. Right, so uh, not so um, uh, proactive as a turn. Uh, Robin, why don't you explain what just happened? I think Hail Caesar 2 is broken. <laughs> um, so my first order was my Bill and Bow with Suffolk. I blundered. Yeah. And just shuffled off to the left. So not That's the worst it. blunder in the they, world. They're going to watch. They're really happy. slowed everything, everything right down. They're watching like Fitzwalter that. as he marches down the road. Thinking, so be that's it. So that's it. Now there is the there is the rule for a gen, for the general's re-roll in in Hail Caesar like there was, but he's got to be within twelve inches. And as we can see, yeah, Suffolk over well here well. is well away from um, Essex. And then what happened over here? Because not a lot's moved over here. So I 
Initially was going to go with the Scourge, then thought, oh, actually, no, I don't want to end up with my cavalry left out on their own. So I thought I'll move up some solid bill and bow, two moves, get into bow shot range, and I failed my roll twice. So the only thing that's moved is, is that lot of just shuffle around. All it's done is, is just basically just lessen his away. firepower. So we are into the shooting phase, and I think the only thing that's going to be can. in range is going to be your cannon. So cannon has a range of 36 inches. Now, of course, the cannon rules in version 1 were... Um, uh, just on the uh, the update that Rick Priestley had done and then in the rules that, that we'd used. Um, they are now in the Hail Caesar rulebook, so it has a 36 inch range, it gets one dice. Okay, so who's the cannon gonna shoot at? He's gonna go for the bill and bow unit. This guy here? Yeah. Okay, that is uh, James Harrington. So you're gonna shoot his. Now, the cannon is over uh, 12 inches away, so it counts as being at extreme range, so it's just minus one. There's no other modifiers to it, so you're just hitting on a five. No. Nope, that's a miss. Is that it? Is that everything? Yeah, so there we go. So as is uh, probably pretty normal in these games, the first couple of turns are just lining up the army. So we'll just get on with it and go into Neville turn two. Right, so the Neville turn, a uh, bit of a bit of a mixed bag. Starting over here, William Neville, Lord Falkenberg, he managed to order um, his uh, scurriers forward. Now, I did want them to charge that unit in the flank, um, but they didn't. They didn't get off enough moves. They only got one off. This unit here just moved up to support, but they'll be able to uh, rain some arrows into that unit. This unit just moved and cleared the obstacle, and I wanted these guys to move up and give support to over here, but they didn't make it. They failed their order roll. Falkenberg just moved up here to support his, his men going forward. In the middle here, John Neville did nothing. He, he failed and he, his order roll, and he's not close enough to Warwick to uh, get his re-roll. Warwick issued a divisional order um, to all of his units, and he just got a single move. I decided not to use his reroll because I thought it was better to just move everything up a little bit rather than risk nothing moving at all. So, uh, so there we go. Right, let's get into the Neville shooting, um, and I think we'll start over here. Um, I'm going to fight, use my unit of Bill and Bow here, and I am going to shoot at that unit of Bill and Bow that are presenting their flank quite nicely to them. Okay, so uh, I have three dice for their shooting. I uh, don't have any modifiers, so it's just four or more. I've got the marked mobility, so I can reroll one. Um, so they got to take a break test. So it's two hits and you're taking a break test uh, for the six. So potential disorder. So you need two saves of four. And as I say, we're going with the standard stats that are in the Hail Caesar rulebook. So in our other games, they're five, but we're going with the standard one. So it's four. So okay. two casualties and you need to take a break test for, for the six. A seven, you're fine, but just two casualties on the unit. Next up, my cannon is going to fire at the unit of handgunners that are directly in front of it. Um, it's in range, but it, like um, Robin's one, it's going to need a five or more to hit. No. Okay, so there we go. That is the end of my turn. Going quickly through these, but I have a feeling things are now going to uh, speed up a little bit, so long as Robin can actually get his army... Well, Bernard has to turn up this turn. Oh, he does, doesn't he? Yes, I forgot. Oh, God, yeah, I forgot about your reinforcement. The question is, what are you going to do with them? Are you going to bring them on over here where Warwick's uh, division is actually doing something or uh, or over here where there's quite a big, uh, big gap? So, well, let's find out what he's going to do. So we'll go into Suffolk turn two.
a really successful turn for yeah. for Robin. Nearly wasn't. There was a, there was a moment where I thought Robin might cry, <laughs> uh, but we're okay. So Robin, uh, why don't you start us off over here where things are so, a little bit more dispersed? Yeah. So Essex managed to move some bill and bow forward, his men at arms forward, and the handgunners shuffle forward a bit, and then the unit that was in column. Uh, managed to form up and deploy. Decided it wouldn't be a good idea to be in a nice sort of uh, target. No. No. So the only thing it didn't move is, ironically, the cavalry. Who, they you, were going for a charge. They uh, failed uh, that. Fa failed that. But that's not the end of the world. At least I managed to get into bow range now. See, um, Suffolk was uh, quite active. Yeah, yeah, just, but everything was. I didn't want one unit to end up really close, so everything's just moved up. Managed to get my unit out of the hedge and formed up in a vague sort of line. And then Burners... You rolled for him to come on, because yeah, he was held in reserve. Yeah, didn't blunder at least, but didn't pass. Well, actually, to be honest, it was just whether he blundered or not, because the mo their movement was all over the Six, same yeah, it was going to be on, so his question anyway. is, was he coming on or not? So, but... obviously, the, the wood is a little bit of an obstacle, so some, two of his units are going to have to come around the wood, but that's fine, and then I managed to get two units of, well, a unit bit about a small Absolutely. Very cool. Should probably say, just in case we didn't say earlier, obviously this here counts as a wood. This area here counts as a wood. Where we just have single trees on their own and like this thing, if they don't actually block line of sight or provide cover or anything like that, they're just there to make the battlefield look a little bit more broken up. Um, so, where do you want to start with the shooting? Uh, let's, I'll start over here. Yeah, so they are in range of the... I'll just shoot at the um, bit of both directly in front of them, Harrington. Okay, so it's just going to be three dice hitting on fours, re-rolling one. Okay, so um, I should have been at minus one for my last shot because I forgot it was at extreme range. So this is at extreme range because yeah. you're over half. Oh, is it, oh, it's over 12, over not 12. over half, just over 12. Um, so you're hitting on five, yeah. re-rolling one. No. no, all misses. Okay. Uh, right, my cannon... Your cannon's got a 36, it's going to have to be this yeah, unit be here, isn't yeah, it? So it has to be them. Still over 12, so it's a minus 1. That's it, uh, so hitting on a 5. Oh. Oh. Yep, yeah. okay, so that is a 6, and I my save is capped at 5, five so five. it's a single save of 5. Yes. Oh. Do I have to, I think I have to take a break test though. I mean, um, you do for a uh, handgun, so I would assume a cannon is... Well, of course you would, when we were using our... Um, version of draws you would but obviously we're trying we're double checking <laughs> just because okay so no break test required um from that where are we going next so we've done those as your your handguns the handguns no, they're, they're only 18 inch range they're only 18 they might be in range oh that's... yes yeah. they are okay. yeah they're in range so uh right let's get them okay so robin has two shooting dice and uh he is going to be hitting on fives Yes. Yep, uh, and I have to take a break test, but I've got to take a break test anyway. Oh no, it's if I suffer casualties, I've got to take a break test. So first we've got to save. So I save on a four. No, so I have to take a break test. I have to take one anyway. Uh, six for ranged is... Hold your ground disordered or retreat in good order. I'm going to hold my ground disordered. Right, where would you like to go next? Right, let's just come down the line. So these, Bill and Bo, will be at the... Uh, these guys here, this they're Bill not, and Bow, they're not Calais, not Calais veterans. veterans, but they are. They they're just, just I mean, not suffering the minus one. Yeah. So you're hit. You've got three dice hitting on fours, re-rolling one. Okay, so three hits. I need three saves of four. That's uh, two casualties. They're going to fire at them as yeah. well. Okay, so we're looking for exactly the same. No, you can re-roll one. One. A one hit, one save of four. Save that one. Okay, okay so where do you want to go? You've got that Bill and Bow unit so on the hill. Be, um, yeah, at the... It will be, you can see, it's half my unit covered by yours. No, I think you're fine, because half your unit can see my unit. Okay, so again, you're just going to be hitting on fours. Rerolling one. Oh, that's another break test. Two saves, a four and a break test. One more casualty. Okay, so first of all, they don't have an armour of, um, <coughs> of uh, four, they've got an armour of five. Um, and also, we do the break test at the uh, the end of the phase, which is something we, we keep forgetting. So they've still got, they haven't done their break test, they've still got to do it. So who are we moving on to next? So it will be, so they're not going to have any other shirt. This unit shooting at them. Yeah, I think it's, are you within 12? No, we just on. No, so you're hitting on fives. Being in the flank makes no odds, re-rolling. 
One hit. One hit and a break test. So a save of five, because that's their armor. So another casualty and a break test. This No, no, no. Is there anyone else to shoot? Um, yes, them. Yeah, so so they've got, shoot them so they got another casualty. Hang on a second. Okay, so the shooting with them is two dice, because they're a small unit. Still uh, minus so one. it's minus one, so hitting on five, re-rolling one. Ah, oh, two saves of five. One save, another casualty. Okay, so is that the end of all of your shooting on the board? Yep. Okay, so now we're meant to do the break test. So these guys are meant to take the break test now. These guys should have done it earlier, but it wasn't really weird if I was shooting at them, but we will remember for future. So I need a break test. They're not in excess of their stamina, which is four. They've taken three casualties, so just 2d6 straight. That's a six for cavalry. Retreat disordered, okay? Okay, so there we are. So I'd say it's actually a pretty successful turn for you. You've forced back Falkenberg over here. Uh, my center's not doing anything, and you've well, disordered, disordered the line it's over here. Stalled your advance. But obviously, Burners is, uh, is coming up the top there, which is a little bit concerning for me. Um, right then, well, we'll go into the third Neville turn. Well, things didn't really go according to plan. So over here, I wanted to make a bit of a push up the hill. That kind of went all right. Down here, this unit of Bill and Bo have moved to the bottom of the hill so they can give some fire. Over here, Jeffrey Gates' little unit is pushed through, so my men-at-arms are now starting to advance up the hill towards Robbins. Uh, this unit is obviously disordered, so they couldn't do anything, and I managed to move the cannon up. But that was kind of where the successes started to uh, fade. In um, John Neville's unit here, I managed to get William Parr's unit up so he can give fire through the hedge line there. And that was all that moved. The Rebuilder Quinn, the, um, uh, the unit Bill and Bow didn't do anything. I blundered with these men at arms who drifted left uh, and turned to face them. So um, that's, a, that's a pain. Over here with um, William Neville, I wanted to, what I wanted to do was get this unit here, move them here to form a bit of a, as it's Robert said, a bubble against what's coming, uh, and I failed completely, so I couldn't do any orders. So this unit, a little bit marooned at the moment, but we'll see what we can do. So I think we'll start with the shooting, and we might as well start over here on the right. So this unit is going to fire at your unit on a the hill. They're within 12 inches, I believe. Uh, so it's center of unit to any point of yours yep. perfect so they're hitting on fours re-rolling one for marksman okay let's see what we get uh all hits uh so you need three saves of four on the, uh, and then a break test at the end of a turn yeah so one casualty and a break test Okay, we just chucked the blue one on there to remind us that there's a, uh, a break test that needs taking. Um, down here, they can't shoot because they're in the way. That can't shoot because it moved. These guys can shoot though, and they're going to fire into your men at arms. So minus. It is. It is minus one because I'm shooting at heavy infantry now. Now, I think that might have actually been a rule in the previous edition. It's just we never played it and never read it. It's more obvious in this one. It's more obvious. So, um, when you're playing the late medieval period, it's any heavy infantry you fire at, it's minus one. When you're playing the other period, so if you're doing the ancients, or if you're, say, doing the Saxons, it's heavy infantry armed with shields who get the minus one. So, I am minus one to hit to the front. I'm not within six inches, so I'm hitting on fives, re-rolling one for marksman. Come on. No. Damn. Okay, no hits. Well, that was suitably terrible. Um, these guys are going to continue. Now, they have to shoot the nearest target, which I think is going to be them. Um, could you mind just checking that out? They're actually closer. Middle and, to middle. Uh, in that case, I'll carry on peppering the uh, the same unit that I've already put two casualties on. So I'm hitting on fours, re-rolling one. Oh, Reroll. So that's definitely a break test. Oh, there we go. So we'll put the little blue dice on them, show they're taking a break test, and uh, you need uh, three saves of four. Two more casualties. So now they have gone out. Oh no, they're stamina six, isn't it? It's not black powder. <laughs> uh, next up, let's have a look. They can't fire because 
that unit's you know, uh, more than half. And these guys shoot. Uh, in 20. I would say no. no. I'd say that's too. If they'd too have been awkward. close enough, I'd say they were in. Yeah. Not, I don't think that's the case. Either. So, no, I think that's it. So, it's time for you to take some break, break tests. So, um, should we start off with the guys on the top of the hill? So, this unit of Bill and Bow here, just 2d6 straight. So four is bad. Six, uh, that's going to be stand your ground disordered or retreat in good order. I will. Yeah, ooh. Hmm. Thing is, you haven't got your reinforcements, have you? So if you give ground. Yeah, I'm just going to stand my ground. Disordered. disordered. Perfect, and the other unit requiring a break test is these guys here. So they aren't in excess, so no, so just. Oh dear. Oh dear, they are gone. Solid, solid. Yeah, that was, uh... They are they are gone. So a double one is the only result on the uh, the break test table, which uh, results in flight to ranged attacks, isn't it? Yes, it is. I think it is. Yeah. 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 I mean, anything else would have been fine because they weren't shaken or disordered. Okay. Um, fantastic. Brilliant. Well, that's that unit broken. Um, Suffolk's only got one more unit before his uh, his brigade becomes oh his brigade his division becomes broken. Um, so that wasn't so bad. Right, that's the end of Neville Turn 3. So I'll hand it back to Robin and uh, let's see what's going to happen. I'm a little bit nervous about my left flank. Um, not so concerned over here. Let's see what he's going to do. Well, there we go. That is the end of quite an active Suffolk turn. So, um, Suffolk's done something he's never done before, Robin, hasn't he? And we're using one of the new commander rules from uh, version 2 of Hail Caesar. What's he done? I've been goaded. Um, <laughs> Just to see a new rule. All you've got to do to get Robin to do something is go, there's a new rule. Do you want to see what it does? Suffolk joined his unit of men-at-arms and used the follow me rule to make it into combat with that slightly weakened unit that I've been peppering with arrows. So essentially, the it has to be the final order that that commander gives to his division. Uh, he just didn't give any other uh, uh, any other orders. He's left his other unit up there on the hill. One had just seen their lord go running off down the hill. Essentially, he joins a unit like you would with, say, a rally order in the old edition. You then make an order test to charge, and if successful, well, you just make an order test. It's, yeah. I don't think it, it's not necessarily has to be a charge. The unit then goes three moves regardless. It doesn't matter what the success was, you know, whether you got uh, one under, two under, or three under. You just eight or less, which was his command rating, and Robin used it to charge his unit. Um, closing fire did nothing because closing fire, you're minus one to hit and you're minus one for shooting at the uh, the heavy infantry. Uh, so I needed sixes to hit. So if once the heavy infantry start moving and they're on the charge, they're going to be very, very hard to stop. Um, so that was cool. Uh, so that's what Suffolk did. What happened over so on this side? Essex, we had another charge with men at arms. We're going to be fighting through the thicket. Yeah, obviously arrows yep. pinging off in every direction. Yep, that's it. I'm defending the obstacle, so I'll be um, getting a little bit of a bonus to my save. Uh, Handgunners just moved slightly, just so I can get some shots against the uh, Jeffrey Gates as he advances. Robin doesn't like this unit. No. <laughs> he, has, he has memories. <laughs> uh, and the cavalry just managed the one move. Tried to charge. Yeah, just, just the one move up. Not quite good in javelin range either. No, so everything everything down here is closing. Um, over on this side, though, not a lot of movement. No, just, in fact, just actually, the one. No, just the one unit. Just managed to move into guys. range, so they should be able to fire at one of your units. That's it. So. Two. Yeah, Burn is sort of just eyeing things up on the edge of the battlefield. I think he's probably waiting to see what happens to Suffolk. Yeah. He hasn't really been that good. Hole if that goes wrong. Well, we did we did just point out that up until that point, your centre consisted of <laughs> that unit. <laughs> just one unit. Um, so we're into shooting. So where do you want to start? Do you want to start over on that flank or start over here? Sense. Start on this flank? Okay, so... so... Disordered uh, at them. So they can be, like we said... They're within sixes. 12, aren't they? I should have... They are. Sixes on sixes. Yeah, yep. so. so they're disordered, which is minus one, and it's minus one because you're firing in the, at the front arc of a uh, formed heavy infantry unit, so you're hitting on sixes. Because you need sixes to hit, that means you need two sixes to disorder. I say disorder, I mean um, force a break test. 
Okay, so that's uh, one hit, and I get a single save of four. Um, they do have the stubborn rule with a minute arm, so I can re-roll one save once per turn. Um, I might as well roll it now. There we go, it's saved. Okay, right, handguns. Handguns. Okay, so they're minus one. I suppose, again, because you're shooting at the yeah, front. Yeah, but they're uh, not with the range and they're obviously not disordered, so just a minus one, so five. Just fives. Okay. Okay, so two hits. Um, I need, it's capped at, well, no, 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 that's, no, that's um, cannons. It doesn't, it's not the same for handguns. So just two saves of four. Um, so one save and one casualty, but because I took a casualty, I have to take a break test at the end of the turn. No, I used it on the first one. So one casualty and a break test at the end of the turn. What about your cannon? Oh yes, so cannon will also be at them. Okay, am I under, no, it's uh, so under it's, half. You so are under it, half, so it's not extreme range. So two dice hitting on fives. <sighs> nope. Okay, right, well, um, that's the end of the shooting just on that side. Um, let's have a little look over here. What, what do you want to go with? So, from the right, these are just in range of your cavalry. Oh dear, okay. So, I'll be hitting on fives. Yep, so fives to hit. One hit, two yeah. hits and a break test, uh, two saves of five. No, two casualties and a break test. Okay. okay, so they are in excess when they come to take their break test. And these, which are not at long range. That, that unit there. Okay, so three dice hitting on fours, Just we're one. running one. Cool. Okay, uh, that's one save and a break test. Uh, one casualty and a break test rather. And then just two dice from them, two shots into these. Into these guys here. Okay, it's going to be fives, fives, isn't it? No. no, misses. Right, let's just do the break, break test tests. quickly. So that's the end of the shooting. So I've got four break tests to take, annoyingly. So first of all, we'll take the break test for Jeffrey Gates' unit. No, three break tests. Yeah. Sorry, three. Jeffrey Gates' unit. So 2d6 straight. He's also got Valiant, so he can re-roll that. Uh, six. Um, so hold your ground disordered or retreat in good order. Ooh. Um... I will, retreat in good order, he's gonna to go to the other side of the unit, isn't he? Um, he will, I think he'll retreat in good order. Um, next up, we have the Light Cavalry, who are an additional minus one, because they are one in excess of their stamina. Uh, five. Uh, retreat disordered. Retreat disordered, okay, I'll get them moved in a minute. And then this unit here are not in any kind of excess, so it's just 2d6 straight. Six, so that's gonna be hold your ground disordered or retreat in good order. Yeah. Right, they will hold their ground yeah. disordered. Right, I'll get all that sorted out and then we'll just quickly sum up. Okay, so here's a view of the battlefield um, at exactly the halfway point. Robin has pushed me right back um, on that flank, which I'm not thrilled about. What am I talking about? We still we have close combat. Fight. We haven't done any of the close combat. We were distracted by pizza. Right, we were, the pizza's just turned up. In fact, let's go eat that and then we'll do the close combat. Okay, so quick in salute. We've, eat, we've eaten the pizza, so now it's time to do some hand to hand combat. Robin, which one do you want to start with? Start with Suffolk. With Suffolk, okay. So this works pretty much the same way as before. Uh, you have charged, so you get plus one to hit. The small unit of men at arms gets five dice, and Suffolk has a, uh, as a commander, has a racing of two. By default, the army general has a uh, attack of three in combat, and commanders have two. Obviously, if you start playing, you can play around with that as much or as little as you like. But as I said, we're doing everything basic today. So uh, you've got seven attacks. Now, in, in the vanilla rules, I have seven attacks as well. So you have seven attacks hitting on freeze for charging. You're tough fighters, so you can reroll one of those. Uh, four five, hits. Five, 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 five hits. Five hits. Yes, you're hitting on freeze. I have seven attacks and I am hitting on fours, rerolling nothing. Uh, four. Okay, so you need four saves of four. You can reroll one for stubborn. Two casualties. I need five saves of four. Huh. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. 
see if Suffolk gets healed. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yes. We have to see that. So you always roll for the commander to see if he's an additional casualty. So I roll 2d6 and I add 2 for his combat rating. If it's more than 12, then he might be dead. Oh, nice. That's, that's a oh, very, very close. Um, in fact, that was as close as it could get. So uh, you have lost the combat by 2. Um, so you're rolling to run away. Uh, well, you're not rolling to run away. You're rolling your break test 2d6 minus 2. Four. Oh dear, I'm not sure that's too good. Uh, let's see what that is. Uh, it's break if shaken, otherwise give ground together with supports. Everything is disordered. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, that's like so. Yes, away away you go and take Suffolk with you, because he's still technically part of that unit. Yeah, he's, he's well, he can he can leave them um, next turn. Even if they're disordered, you still leave. Yeah, I think I believe so, um, because there'll be a, yeah, I think he can. Okay, so the next combat, um, let's just have a look down from here so you can see Robin's unit here. So Robin, you're going to get five dice hitting on threes uh, for charging. I'm going to get seven dice hitting on fours. My bonus comes to my morale save. I'm going to be saving on threes um, if Robin hits me. So Robin gets five dice hitting on threes. Okay, you can reroll. Well, oh, you don't need to. Five hits. I'm looking for fours. That's four hits. Uh, you need four saves or four. Reroll one. Oh, there you go. See, everything's fine. Uh, and uh, I need five saves of three. Yep, safe. <laughs> so there's no no supports into the combat. There's no bonuses. It's just an out and out draw. So that's just going to roll on into the next turn. Fantastic. Um, that is now definitely the end of the Suffolk turn. Uh, so we shall go into the fourth Neville turn and see if I can now start pushing up the hill. <laughs> um, right, so I screwed up a little bit there and um, that one was pretty down to me. I forgot to press record as we were doing the, uh, as we were doing the command phase. Uh, so I will sum up very, very quickly. Um, essentially over here, the first of all, we might have noticed that I am one men at arms unit down. That's because my first men at arms unit charged up the hill towards these guys here. Uh, Robin did his closing fire, got two hits. Um, which he needed sixes for. Uh, so, uh, I then suffered two casualties. I also needed a break test because he rolled the two, two sixes, which is the required result for me to take a break test. And I rolled a double one. So the unit just ran up the hill, got shot and ran off. So that was the end of them. Jeffrey Gate then decided to try and move up the hill, try and uh, take back some, some lost pride and uh, didn't get very far. And these units have just kind of formed up into a bit of a horseshoe. So we're gonna do some fire um, into the Suffolk lines up there. This combat's still gonna roll on. Cannon I'm leaving where it is for when one of these units inevitably runs and a gap appears and I can lay down some cover. Only thing that moved in John Neville's uh, ward of troops was the Rebuilder Quinn, which has moved up to the corner of the field, ready to give fire next turn. Over here, my unit initiative charged into um, the retreating Duke of Suffolk and his disordered unit of men at arms. And so um, you will get support from these guys when we fight, um, but it could be brutal. You could lose the Duke. And then over here, I don't know what's going. I don't know what's going on with um, William Neville Falkenberg. Um, essentially, nothing happened. Nothing went right. So, uh, Burners has kind of got a bit of a gap here to move into um, for you to capitalise on. So, we'll go into shooting, and we'll start over on this side. So, starting with this unit, Bill and Bow. I'm going to fire at your um, cavalry unit. So, it should be yep. So, I'm hitting on fours, re-rolling one. Come on, something good. Uh, one. Two hits and a break test. Uh, you have an armor five of five. Points. One save, one dead, and a break test. Okay, next up, this unit here are going to fire at the handgunners. Uh, they're within 12, so 3d6. Uh, or I think they're in 12. Can you check? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep, so 3d6 hitting on fours, we're on one. Come on. There we go, three hits. Uh, uh, the save of the handguarders. Uh, I'll double check. No. Okay, so they, they have no saves, so they've taken three casualties. But still no break stamina test. Stamina four, I assume. Uh, they're stamina four, so they've still got one left. Um, okay. okay. Uh, they can't shoot. The Rebuilder Queen can't shoot because it moved. This unit back here can't shoot. They're in combat. Um, 
Thank you. I, are they within 45 yet? Yeah. So this unit here is going to fire at them. I'm disordered, so I'm hitting on fives. We're rolling one for Marksman. That's one hit. Oh, so two saves of four and a break test. And one casualty. I'll also fire with these guys at the same unit. Uh, these are going to be hitting on fives, aren't they? Because yeah, same, of the range. Yeah. yeah, because it's at the range. They're not disordered. Oh, uh, we roll one. So we have one save. one save and a break test, which you're taking anyway. Right, time to go through the break tests. Okay, yep, so uh, the break test for the light cavalry is just 2d6 straight. Six, I imagine it's retreat disordered or hold your ground in good order. I think the cavalry was just. Ah, uh, cavalry would be just. Oh, right, okay. Yep, it's retreat disordered. I just got okay. That's it, so I don't have to worry about them doing anything nasty in the uh, uh, next turn. Nine inch, maybe twelve. Nine inch. Who else needs a break test? Just first? the... Um, just this unit, unit over here. Okay, so burner's unit, that's just another 2d6 straight. They're good. They're good, they're just beyond good, they're great, <laughs> they're amazing. Right, so um, let's go into hand-to-hand -hand combat. Well, I think we'll start with the combat in the middle, uh, the one that went on from last turn. So you get five dice hitting on fours, and I have seven dice hitting on fours. Uh, you're re-rolling one for Tough Fighter. Uh, I got four hits. Five hits. You got five hits, okay. I need five saves of three because of the cover. I took three <laughs> casualties. You need four, four saves of four. I can re -roll. Re -roll one. one okay, so you've taken one casualty, I've taken two. So I've lost a combat by one, so I'm taking a break test 2d6 minus one. I don't have anything supporting directly. These guys are too far away. Uh, eight days stand their ground. I'll go on into next turn, but Robin will get a plus one because he won this round. Right, now we do the uh, the biggie one. Now I'm going to get seven attacks, hitting on threes because I charged. Robin is going to have seven attacks, hitting on fives because he's disordered. But he's also got that unit supporting, which will give him three attacks, hitting on fours. So if I roll my attacks first, um, we'll see where we go. So I'm looking for threes. Uh, five hits, and I'm going to put them all into. I should have said they're all in the, that unit. Uh, you need so. Do you want which ones do you want to do first? So you've got seven dice hitting on fives for that unit. Reroll. Reroll one. So three hits. Three? Oh, four hits. Yeah, four hits. Sorry. And then three hitting on fours. And then three hitting on fours. No rerolls. Yeah. So five into. So five. Okay, so first of all, you've got five saves of four to make. We roll in one. Good. All made. Uh, and now I have, what was it, five, five saves of four as well. Rerolling nothing. Okay, so I lost three men. Damn. So I, uh, but before we do that, let's see if, if, the, if the Duke of Suffolk is dead. 2d6 plus two. 10, 12. Oh. Yep, so on a one, two, or three, he's dead. Four, five, or six, he's wounded. He's dead. <laughs> he counts as a casualty, uh, but that's not going to change the combat. So, so long as suffer. It'll change the difference. Um, yes, yeah, so it will change. So you've only won by two instead of three. So we'll work out the ramifications of uh, the Duke of Suffolk falling in combat there. So um, 2d6 minus two for me in the combat. Uh, a result of four. Um, I'm not shaken, so I believe it'll be I'll be retreating disordered. Excellent. Give ground disordered. Right, we'll get this sorted out and then uh, just look at what the ramifications of the death of the Duke of Suffolk is. Well, they weren't going to get paid anyway. <laughs> okay, so there we go. That is the end of the Neville turn four. Um, everything's a little bit up in the air at the moment on this side. Obviously, my units retreated disordered. These units have now... Oh, he'll have recovered from being disordered now, won't he? Because it's the end of my turn anyway. So even though he retreated disordered, he undisorders at the end of my turn. Yeah. Uh, back here, these are... I mean, so I thought hopefully my cavalry... Will, well, they're shaken, so they're not going to be getting back into it. Um, over here... 
a little bit more interesting. Robin's getting pushed back as I come up the hill. So the, the battlefield, the battle line is, is turning. So uh, let's go into the Suffolk turn. Should probably say um, the rules are that once a commander is killed, he's replaced by a subordinate commander with a strategy rating of one less than he was. So Suffolk was a strategy rating of eight. He's brown bread. He's been replaced uh, by this guy uh, who's a handy Burgundian who's turned up just to, to help. And he can be deployed 12 inches um, from any unit in that division. Uh, however, Robin's getting awfully close to having a broken division on his hands there. So um, I think he might be doing some rallying in his turn so let's see what he's going to do Right then, so what happened? <laughs> Not a massive amount. So over here, I actually didn't move anything in this part of Essex. You seem reluctant to charge Warwick's I think uh, the division. Of charging or shooting was better because some of the rules potentially make it better to charge rather than shoot. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, over here, I didn't. That combat, I think I'm doing okay, and I didn't want to join. This unit to rally because yep. I did not want to be in the unit with no armor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. But one of his units has jumped charged. in. Fitzwalter. He's charged into that unit, Bill and Bow. I'm in a bit of a precarious position because I've got four wounds um, um, on me at the minute. Um, you tried to rally a wound, didn't you? Yeah, that didn't that didn't work. But I did before I uh, tried that. I did manage to move them up just the one. They were going to come and support, but didn't quite. Get it. And you pop you popped him in there this yeah. turn, didn't you? Yeah, fit, yeah. Rally off, but nothing. And then Burners has managed to move a couple of units round, so still quite a long way away. Mm -hmm. And then just a small unit up. I didn't make a charge that I was trying for. No, nope, but as you can see, they are pushing. I almost don't want no. to just get one unit forwards because no, like, I'll have one unit in the middle of your army. Or you mean like I did yeah. <laughs> up there? Shooting, where do you want to start? Uh, start over here. Start over here, it seems traditional now, doesn't it? So, you're going to start with a unit on the hill. Yeah, so um, fives, hitting on games. fives. That's it. You can reroll one. Nothing. No, oh dear. Uh, right, handgunners. So, they'll be at. Uh, they are going to be hitting on fives. So, 2d6, hitting on fives, no rerolls. Oh, it's only two. Oh, two oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anyway. Uh, your cannon, uh, that's still a sufficient gap to shoot through. Is he going to fire yeah, at yeah, um, ha Harrington's right unit? Um, you're going to be. Oh, I'm under half. Are you over? No, oh, it's uh, 18. 18. Yeah, I'm under half range. You're under half range, so, so you're on two dice hitting on fours. fours. Yeah. No, that's absolutely nice. fine. Oh dear. Warwick paid the cannonball off before, before, <laughs> before the game. Warwick just threw some money. Right, um, over here, okay. shooting. So starting up here, so basically this unit is going to get absolutely peppered. Yeah, so by... we are at long range, or extreme range though. So okay, so fives. you're hitting on five, so 3d6, hitting on fives, re-rolling one. Oh, oh dear. That's okay, so two saves of four. Uh, one saves so of one casualty and a break test. Okay, uh, there we go. Okay. Next one, then they're not at extreme range, nope. so you're going to be hitting on fours. Okay, you didn't, no need of your reroll, and uh, I need three saves of four. Oh dearie me, three casualties. Okay, okay, and uh, what are the longbows doing? The same unit, cause if I can shake them, I think then I can maybe try and take the middle without being. Okay, charged. right, they're also hitting on fours. Rerolling. Oh, oh, no, no, it's okay. One save, one dead. So there is the, the litany of dead around the side there. Um, so I have taken six casualties. Is that all your all your yeah, shooting? So they'll just be shaken. So they're shaken, and I need to take a break test. Okay, so I need a straight up break test. It's uh, 2d6. I am shaken, so let's see what happens. They're fine, they stay where they are. Right, uh, there was no other break tests to take, were there? No, because you no, missed everything. Missed right, okay then, let's go into close combat. Okay, so which combat do you want to do first? Let's start with the ongoing. Okay, so uh, you won the combat last time, so you're plus one to hit, so you've got five dice hitting on threes, I have seven dice hitting on fours. Okay, can we roll one? All of them, I think you've hit every single okay. time with them. Okay, hopefully not for long, right, come on, I need fours. 
Uh, five as well. Okay, so I need five saves or three for the cover. Uh, two casualties. Okay, you need saves five saves of four. Two casualties. Okay, so two apiece. So, just so it's just a draw and it grinds on because no one is shaken yet. All right, okay, excellent. Uh, next combat is this one here. Now you charged me, so, so you're hitting on threes. You've got seven dice hitting on threes. I have seven dice hitting on fours. Don't eat. Oh, oh dear. Oh no, it's four. 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 I'm hitting on fours. Four as four. well. Four saves of four for you. Three casualties, four saves of four for me. Two, Two casualties. That so. does make you shaken, but it doesn't. It does make me shaken, but I've won the combat. But you won't be able to. I won't be able to advance on you, but you are taking a break test. 2d6 minus one. Three. So they're disordered in front of that unit that's disordered. <laughs> Excellent, all right, let's add the casualties. We, we think we may have done something wrong further back in the game. I'm sure Some. We'll, 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 we'll grab it. Um, that's it, isn't it? So there we go. So my unit is now shaken in the middle there, but it's, it's held its ground. It's done well, that unit. Um, it is it's, your entire left. It, well, it left is. It's, it's holding everything. It's seen off and killed um, the Duke of Suffolk. Um, it's it's put six casualties across those two units by only taking six back. It actually puts me in line of fire of the rebellion. Yeah, I know. That's... I had suddenly thought, oh, I've moved everything actually, you moved it up, I've actually <laughs> moved past it, but I haven't now. No, no, it was this, when you put him in that unit, I was wondering what you were doing, because that's been that's just been sitting there. So, uh, should we move on to, uh, to yeah, the Neville so, turn? Yeah. Neville turn five. Okay, so quite a good turn for uh, for the Neville. So starting over here with Warwick's division, Geoffrey Gate went charging up the hill, um, engaging that unit of uh, Essexes there. Uh, the closing fire did nothing, so we got some close combat there. This unit here did an initiative move and just sort of repositioned slightly so they can give some fire over there. James Harrington's unit used initiative to join um, this combat as a support, and Warwick's just moved up um, to uh, to just shout encouragement at his men, which is going to be needed because over here in John Neville's division, um, all I did was slightly reorder the uh, Rebuilder Quinn. However, this is still going on. I blundered. Fortunately, I could use the General's reroll to sort that out. And then I just failed the order test. So these two units, I don't know what's going on. They're having a big argument. Henry Neville here and um, these are uh, uh, John Neville's uh, liveried men. They're having a bit of a disagreement. Over here, I just realized that this unit's shaken, this unit was shaken, and this unit was shaken. So if this unit became shaken, my division would be broken. So I needed to sort that out. So these guys just a little bit of reforming. They weren't advancing towards the enemy, so they were just turning to face. These guys turned to face, and um, Falkenberg joined the light cavalry and rallied a unit, or, uh, rallied a casualty off of them because uh, I'm, I'm quite concerned because I've got one, two, three, four units facing me, five units facing me, and then two in reserve coming over there. And I've only got one turn, possibly two, left after this. So let's see where we go let's go to the shooting so um i think we'll start over here with this unit they are going to fire at your handgunners can you just check if they're within 12 please they might be just out just out just out okay so i've got three dice hitting on fives re-rolling one right, so hitting on fives re-rolling one. Oh, that's two Ooh. three hits um it's three casualties because it's your handgunners and oh, yeah. it's a break test uh on a minus two well it will be on a minus two yes because you've got up six casualties yep um, so remember you do this at the end of the phase. Ooh, that was a, ooh, a bit brutal. They can't shoot. Cause, oh no, they can shoot if they're supporting, can't they? Can they shoot if they're supporting? Yes, they can, because they're not engaged. It's just supporting, isn't yeah. it? So of course, yes, when they will shoot. They will also fire at the, uh, the handgunners. Now they are within 12, so they're going to be hitting on fours. Strange the things you forget. It's only it's only been you know a, a couple of months since we played. Although, to be fair, since Hale City, the last game of... Oh no, we did some Crusades, didn't we? Yeah. In, um, November. So uh, they are hitting on force. Rerolling one. So another three casualties. <laughs> 
So just say that again, Robin. There, if it's double their stamina, stamina, then they're just shattered. They're so just done. It's as though you rolled a double one on the break. Oh, okay, right. Well, they're but gone. You do it gone. immediately without. So weight of fire from the arrows. So yeah, they're a bit squishy. Um, next, it's the Rebuilder Quinn. Now the Rebuilder Quinn is going to fire at them. I'm looking forward to this. Yep, so it's within nine. It's within nine, so he gets three shots um, hitting on fours. Yep. Fantastic. No kind of re-rolls. Three shots hitting on fours. Uh, two hits, including a six. So it's minus two to your save. Yeah. Right, okay. So uh, so six is then. Six two is two ten, saves of six, yep. No, so it's two casualties, and uh, do you have to take a break test? Okay. Oh, you rolled a six to hit, though? Yes, I did roll. So, so, so we'll be taking a break. Oh yeah, you'll be taking a break test anyway. But I don't have to take it. Because, because it's a black powder. Yeah. Right, okay. Um, these guys in front of them, they're going to shoot. Now they are shaken, so they're going to be minus one to hit. But I'm within six inches, which should... Is it not plus one anymore? It doesn't mention point blank. No? Nope. To hit modifies your ranged attacks. Attackers are shaken disordered. Target is partly obscured. There's no pluses. There's no pluses. Okay, so there's no plus one for being at short range nope. anymore. Okay, that's interesting. So uh, I'm just hitting on five then because I'm shaken. Still re rolling one for marksman. That's two hits. Two hits, so you need two saves of four. Two more casualties. I'm now shaken. Uh, this unit here is just going to fire at its counterpart um, across there. Um, so I'm going to be hitting on fives because I'm shaken. That's uh, two hits and a break test. One casualty. And then finally, this unit here is going to be fired at them. I think they're going to be uh, at the little unit. They'll yeah. be at extreme range. So I'm hitting on fives. Yeah. Break test. So just one save and a break test. Saved, but still. Break right. test. Right, we should probably, that's the end of the shooting, so we should probably start going through the break test. Should we do it in reverse yeah, order? Saving, so up. over here, the small unit, straight up. Five. Ooh, that might be a retreat in good order, maybe? Oh, hold your ground disordered or retreat in good order. I will hold my ground disordered. disordered. Do you want me to just yeah, muddle the bases a little bit? Okay. Uh, next, we have this unit here. They, it's just 2d6 straight. Uh, they're staying good. where they are. Next up, we have the unit in front of these guys. Minus they're one. one in excess. So, yep, 2d6 minus one. Yeah. They're fine. They stay where they are. So, that goes back down. That's it. Okay. All right. So, that was a, that was a pretty good round of uh, shooting. You've now got a shaken unit in the way of... Of everything um let's go over here and start the close combat then so we'll start with the unit that charged up the hill gallantly probably about to be cut to pieces so uh that jeffrey gates unit has five attacks he's charged so he's hitting on freeze he's a tough fighter so he can re-roll one you've got seven attacks coming back um oh hang on i think i might suffer fighting up a hill uphill i have a funny feeling i've got a minus one Oh, so I, yes, I get plus one to hit you. You get plus one to hit me, right. So effectively, I can counter, it's like a counter charge yeah. button to move. So we're both hitting on freeze, basically, because yes. you're fighting uphill. Right, okay, so five dice hitting on freeze for me, re-rolling one. That's not great. Three hits, you have seven dice hitting on freeze. That's all of them. That's all of them, okay, that's really bad. Okay, you need three saves of four. As all of them, I need seven saves of four re rolling one. Four -rolling one. Uh, uh, one casualty, so I lose the combat by one, so it's 2d6 minus one for break test. Three, I'm not shaken, so it should be just retreat disordered. Okay, ground disordered. Okay, so just going to go back to where they were. Okay, so now we'll move on to the uh, the large combat here. <coughs> so draw last it was a draw last time. So I have seven attacks um, from my main unit, and then I have three attacks from that unit. So, but they're all hitting on fours. So I have ten attacks hitting on four. Robin has five attacks hitting on four. Come on! Ooh, those were misses. That was a miss. Five. So fifty percent. <laughs> You can reroll one. Three. So three. I need three saves of three. Two. So one casualty. You need five saves of four. Rerolling one. 
two, two casualties. casualties. Right, okay. I'm now shaken because I'm only staying at four. Right, so okay. Let's see what's going to happen. You lost your combat by one, so it's just 2d6 minus one. Three, and, and they're shaken, shaken so, so I... I'm pretty sure that's... Uh, break if shaken. Okay, off they go. Okay, so my unit um, has made a, a Vic to move forward. Um, something we forgot is that Robin could do that down the hill. So we're just going to play that out here. Robin has moved back into contact with that unit and we fight. He actually counts as getting the plus one for charging, uh, which doesn't multiply with his up, with the uphill thing. So he is going to be getting seven dice hitting on threes. I'll have five dice hitting on fours. Okay, so you're hitting on threes. Oh, it's two. Um, I'm, at, on the hill, I'm actually hitting on fives because uh, I forgot I was disordered. Uh, get ready to re-roll one. One. So I need two saves of four. Re-rolling one. Did I already re-roll? I think I did, didn't you I, did, in the previous yeah. turn. So I've taken one casualty. Uh, you need one save. Of four. So you took one casualty as well. So it is a draw. Neither of us were shaken. Uh, so that's going to grind close, on. Right, okay. So that's at least we've broken through there. That is the end of the Neville turn. So over here, I've broken through in the center. I'm trying to consolidate a little bit. Don't know what's going on at the back here. Now I'm just waiting to see what Robin is going to do in return. So let's go into the fifth Suffolk turn. Actually, I say Suffolk is Essex, isn't it? Yeah, really? Yeah. Well, Suffolk's dead. So it's well, Suffolk's very dead. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, where do we start? Robin? Uh, so. Oh, yes. They managed, uh, the cavalry have done something. At well, last. But they've attempted. We'll see, we'll see what happens, but they managed to get a flank charge off. I can only allocate up, um, up to half my attacks that way, so um, I can only put yeah. four attacks into we'll you. We'll see how that pans out. Um, this is just carrying on. That carries on. I noticed you moved Essex. I did move Essex out of the way. The cannon kind of spirit is. Um, and then we've come over here. They failed a roll to charge through that unit, so. Which could have resulted in disorder anyway, it's not the mm. end of the world. Um, and then all I managed to do is just. Uh, what I should have done is remembered the uh, come with me order potentially and chuck burners in as well and got that charge off. However, losing two commanders could be embarrassing. So, so they've, they've, just, they've moved up one unit. You're though. basically just trying to push me off yeah. the board now in, in, in this corner. Um, okay, well, let's have a look. Where do you want to start shooting? Because I think over here, oh, I think the cannon the can, can shoot. I've just got the cannon. So let's do the cannon. Who uh, is he going to go for? Is he going to go oh, for yeah. them who just came through the hedge? Yeah, they're, they're nearer. They're closer, so. They're nearer, so you, they should be. They're under oh, 18. Yeah, so. they, I was getting two dice against. Uh, so you're going to get two dice hitting on fours. You were. Oh. oh, two hits and a break oh, test. Where are my dice? There we go. So I need two saves capped at six. six. Oh, I can. Oh, no, we're not stubborn. So it's just one casualty, uh, which shakes me, and a break test, which I do at the end of the phase. <laughs> okay, who's yeah, next? They, they can shoot even though they're shaking. Yeah, they can shoot. They're, they're yep. not disordered. So. No, no, they're exactly the same here. So you're, you're shooting at, at me. There's no bonus now for being at close range. No. Nope. So you're hitting on fives because you're shaken. Rerolling one. Just need to That'll do. Okay. Um, These guys them, also at them. Just, uh, fours. just fours, yeah. Rerolling one. Two hits. Uh, saving on fours. No. Nope. So two more casualties. Yeah. So they uh, they are going to be taking a break test. These guys. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, again, no bonus for close range. So just fours uh, hitting on. Yeah. Sorry, hitting on fours. Rerolling one. Oh, so a break test for definite and two casualties. Two casualties. And just two shots in So we hit on sixes because I'm over twelve. These guys here. Okay. So I need two sixes for the break test. So no. Okay. All right then. So. I'll just double check whether they need a break test or not. Whether these casualties carry to the next break test. I feel like it is. No, no. It's if you cause casualties through excess shooting. Yeah. Um, I'll double check now, actually. Okay, so let's take these break tests. So these guys in here, they've got no casualties in excess. Uh, so it's just 2d6 straight. Come on. 
Da, they're nice. fine, nine nip, they're fine. Uh, the next unit, these guys here, now these guys are two in excess, so it's 2d6 minus two. Uh, eight, they're fine. Well, I can do some more like this. This unit over here, they are also two in excess, 2d6 minus two. Uh, five, I believe they are retreating uh, disordered. disordered. Oh, yeah, retreat yeah. disorder. No, uh, hold your holding ground. ground disordered or retreat in good order. I'm going to hold my ground disordered. Yeah. Uh, and then these guys here, no, they didn't need no. one. So that's it. Okay, Fantastic. That's right. Well, we'll just get all that sorted out and go into the hand to hand combat. Okay, so we've just sorted that out down there, but Robin's just realised that there's... Uh, now, I don't know if this was in the original edition. If it is, we've been playing it wrong for about five years. Uh, Robin, why don't you just read what you uh, found out about being charged in the flank? Yeah, so turn to face. Uh, so if it was cavalry or elephants, very few elephants in Wars of the Roses, though, um, they could just turn to face no matter what. The receiving but you unit. Are anyone, apart from a pipe block, so sorry, Miller, um, they can attempt to do so, but they are going to become disordered no matter what. On a one, okay. two, or three, yeah. they fail, so they don't get it in time, they get caught in the flank, and they're disordered. Yeah. Or you pass the test four, five, or six, you turn to face, but you're disordered. But you're disordered. So you're always going to be disordered, but you've got that chance of having more, more attacks. Okay, and it's then just, the other option is just to take it. Or you just take it. Uh, I'll try and do it. So what, I need four, five, or six, four, yeah? Four, five, or six. Four, so five, or six. Oh, yeah, four, why not? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you're disordered, but at least you're getting... Seven. Something. So these guys actually turn to face this yeah. charge. Okay. All right. That's fair, fair enough, isn't it? There we go. Right. Excellent. Okay. So is that the combat you want to do first? Yeah, let's do that. Excellent. So I believe you're, you need to check what the Scurrier's um, okay. attacks are. I think it's six because uh, uh, they're actually medium cavalry. They're not light cavalry. So you're going to get six attacks or whatever your attacks are. They're going to be hitting on threes. I'm going to have seven attacks hitting on fives because I'm disordered. Yeah, as a small unit, they are six. Okay, excellent. So you have six attacks hitting on threes. I have seven attacks hitting on fives. Wow. Okay, that's all of them. Yeah, there's no special. No, uh, I need fives. Uh, three. Okay, so uh, I need five saves of... Four. Oh dear. Four casualties. You need three. What's their save? Uh, it's only five plus, but I guess I've won the combat no matter what. Yeah, so three saves of five. Oh. oh, come on. So I lost by four. So I'm 2d6 minus four for my break test. Uh, eight minus four is four. That's... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You're not shaking, are you? Nope. So I think you're. Yeah. Is it retreat disordered? Was it four, sorry? Yeah. Uh, yeah, give ground. Disordered. Your ground disordered. Oh, okay, are you going to follow up? Well. All right, right. We'll just get things moved and we'll come back to you. Okay, so it's a fresh round of combat. Um, Robin again has five saves hitting on uh, five saves, five attacks hitting on threes, and I get seven attacks hitting on fives. Uh, four, just four. I am hitting on fives. Two. Um, I. You need two saves of five. One, One casualty. I need, what was it, four saves of four. Uh, that's another three. <laughs> so I've lost the combat by two. So it's 2d6 minus two, and I am now shaken. Uh, four, is oh, that, shaken. am I gone? You are shaken, yeah? Yeah. Uh, break is shaken. Yeah, they're shaken, they are gone. Uh, but your cavalry, I can't, don't think can advance again, because they've already done it once. Yeah. So that's it, that's where they end up. And they're rather close to Warwick, which I don't like, but they are close to my cannon, which I do. Okay, so that's actually the end of... No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. That's the only charge yeah. I made, wasn't it? So, um, that was drawn last time, wasn't it? Yeah, so, yeah. you've got seven attacks hitting on fours. I have five attacks hitting on fours, re-rolling one. Okay, so yes, you are uphill. So, you've got seven attacks hitting on threes. Five. Five. I have five attacks hitting on fours, re-rolling one. Four. You need four saves of four. One, one casualty. I need five saves of four. Rerolling one. Three. three. So I've lost the combat by lost two, two and I am now shaken. So 2d6 minus two. Uh, six. I think that's just retreat disordered. Was it six? Get yeah. ground in good order. Get ground in good order? Yeah. Oh, okay. But I'm already disordered. So, uh, disordered. right. Okay, is a disorder actually might have been another minus one? Can you just check? I think if I'm disordered, 
There might have been another minus one to my brake test. No, the aim modifiers are the... Okay, all right, okay. So they just go, they give They give ground. All right, we'll get this sorted out. Hopefully that gap's gonna be big enough for them to get through or I think they're destroyed. Okay, Robin, so what, what are you planning on doing? I will do my Victoria, or my sweeping charge into... Into them? Yeah. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'll stand and shoot. <laughs> Can, they, can I do that on the sweeping charge? Yes. yes. I don't think you could. Yeah, like usual charge responses. Okay. So have charging shots, uh, charging shots, closing shots, traversing shots. Okay, so I can do it. All yeah. right, so three shots at minus one. Hit on fives. Yeah. Rerolling one, so it's a break test. Two saves and a break test. Yeah. Come on. Ah, oh, that would have been amazing if they just run. So still going? Yes, you just smash into them. And then we fight some more combat. I don't think, I'm gonna be a meanie here, but I don't think you're uphill anymore. No. <laughs> but gonna, you did charge. I was gonna say, should we say the edge of the map? Or the yeah, yeah. The cloth change with the map changes would mark the edge of I actually know what the scores are yet. I can't remember if we said at the beginning of the game, but we agreed that it had to be a difference of three to be a winner. So if our scores are within three of each other, it's a, a bloody draw. Um, okay, so you're gonna get seven attacks hitting on threes, I'm getting seven attacks hitting on fours. Go for it. Uh, all of them. Oh my god. You had some amazing dice rolling this game. Uh, six. <laughs> so it works. You need six saves of four. Neutral death. Uh, three. Three, so three casualties. I need saves of four. Come on! Oh. I lost the dice. You did, but. Oh, where'd it go? It's there. Oh, thank you. I couldn't see it. Uh, That's it, two. So you so, won the combat. So I won the combat by one, so you're rolling 2d6 minus one. Eight, hold your ground, and we fight again. Okay, so that is now the end uh, of the Suffolk turn, properly this time. Um, how do you think it's going? It's uh, really, yeah. You are putting a lot of pressure. I've been forced back. The only place I've broken through is in the middle, so... Let's go into the uh, the Warwick turn and hope that we, uh, or even that the game ends actually, because I think I might be just winning on points. You've got um, quite a few shaking. To remember, but I do. I need to sort my lines out. Let's even, see. Even the unit that's broken through actually, they're shaking, aren't they? Yeah, they are now. Uh, right then, let's see what's going to happen. Right, I'm not very happy. That didn't. My my had a grand plan that that didn't that didn't quite go right. Thanks to Robin, um, which I suppose is the whole point of the game. Right, let's see what's going on over here. Uh, these guys retreated um, so that they could uh, make way for the. Oh, sorry, I meant to do one thing. Are you all right if I do? Yeah. I mean, he did pass all his orders. He was going to join this unit and then rally. No, he's not joining the combat. Hang on, let's just see if he gets his rally off. Yep, he yep. did. So um, he took a unshook. casualty and un unshook that unit. Right, so they move back, <laughs> allowing room for the cannon to fire at that cavalry. This combat is carrying on. I've left these guys here to try and do something to the cannon. I think I only need to put like one um, one casualty or something on it to, uh, to drive it off the board. Finally, John Neville's men moved. He didn't. I tried to bring these guys up to um, act as supports in that combat. Didn't happen. However, these guys have moved into firing positions. Now, you might have seen on the overhead a lot of stuff going on over here. Basically, what happened was Falkenberg joined the um, light cavalry and yelling, follow me. He led a gallant charge through his own men, becoming disordered on the way, trying to charge these guys. These guys did closing fire, did one hit on them which I failed to save for, which was enough to shake them, to cause me to take a break test, which I f basically failed and had to retreat disordered. So all that happened out of that was, is I trampled my own men. And now I'm, I now I'm shaken. So he's only still only got one unit that isn't shaken in his division. So shooting will go over here. Starting with the cannon firing at the horses. It's in uh, closer range. So he's going to get two dice hitting on fours. One hit and a break test. No. no, so a casualty 
and then they're taking a break test at the end of a turn. Yeah. My archers here are going to fire at the cannon. Um, now, does that count as a? It doesn't count as obscured, does it? It's over half range. Um, oh, it's over twelve. Yeah. It's over twelve. Uh, in our rules, when we were doing the things, we said they, a bit like in Black Powder, they counted as obscured, but we, we, that isn't a thing on there. So it is just 3d6 hitting on fires, rerolling one. It's hitting a break test. Two saves. I okay. uh, oh, don't know what his arm, his arm morale is. Okay. okay, so it's got stamina three. Uh, it's taken two, um, but it's needing to take a break test at the end of the turn. Um, the Rebuilder Queen is going to carry on peppering this unit, so it gets three dice and it's hitting on fours. And they all missed. The unit uh, back here. Now we said this unit can see them, but it counts as obscured. So it's three dice hitting on fives. Are they within 12? I think they might not be. Nope. No, so they're hitting on sixes. So I need two sixes to cause a break test. Well, actually, I only need one casualty anyway, so. Oh. There we go, and I get to reroll one. So two saves of four. No. Yep, but a break test. A break. But you're still taking a break test. This unit that's in their face, I'm shaken, so I'm minus one, so I'm hitting on fives. That's uh, two saves of four. One more casualty. Okay, so there's going to be some modifiers now when they come to do their break test. This unit here, firing at them, um, they've been hitting on fives again because I'm shaken. That's uh, two. Two hits, two saves of four. Another casualty. This unit is now going to fire at them as well, um, and I'll be hitting on fours. So hitting on fours. Rerolling one, one eight six. No, all missed. Right, that is the end of the shooting phase. So we need to do the break test. So we need to do a break test for your light. Uh, well, they're medium cavalry. Uh, just two d six straight. They're fine. Uh, now the, the cannon. cannon. So I'm just going to check to see if there's anything funny with cannons and break tests. Okay, so the, I've just double checked and uh, the cannons use the infantry section on the break test table because the uh, artillery crews count as infantry. So just 2d6 straight. Seven, they're fine. The dish unit here, they're 2d6 minus one this time because you've taken one excess casualty. Oh, fine. Um, that's it, isn't it? Yeah. That's it in terms of the break test. Right, um, let's go on to the close combat of which there is only one. Now, uh, I won it last you time. Won it. I won the last combat last time, so I've got seven dice hitting on threes. You have seven dice hitting on fours. Yeah. Hitting on threes. Wow. Uh, two. Is that seven? That was six. That's only six dice. Still, oh. still just two. <laughs> uh, you're hitting on threes. I'm hitting on fours. Fours. You That's still a lot more. It is six, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you need two saves of four. This could be enough to shake me. Oh, yeah. Yep. So you're one shaken. Shaking. So you've taken one casualty and you're shaken. I need saves of four. Um, I've taken three casualties. Um, I lost the combat by two. So I'm 2d6 minus two. Uh, nope. Um, so that's a five. So I, I imagine retreat, retreat disordered. disordered. So Robin, do you want to follow up with your victorious move, or do you join the stakes? You've still got a turn in hand that you so could just shower me with powers. Yeah, I should. I should not. Do okay, that. you're gonna stay there. Okay. Oh, I'll obliterate you in my cavalry. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Excellent. Right, well, that is the end uh, of my turn. Now, obviously, at the end of this, we're going to be seeing if the battle will be carrying on after Robin's turn. So let's just get on with the Essex Suffolk Alliance turn six. six. Okay, so where are we in the uh, what could be the last Suffolk turn? Uh, Robin, why don't you talk us through it? You actually started over here, didn't you, with Burns' yeah, division? Squeezing you. So I've gone for the charge there. Um, didn't take. Oh, you took one casualty, took on, casualty the way on the way in. in, but wasn't enough to stop me. I, whether I regret that, actually. You've already. Well, you've taken five casualties. I'm shaking. So you're going to be hitting on threes. I'm going to be hitting on fives when we do yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, small unit just moved up to the wall. Just. Just to annoy me. And then the plan was. Burners went to join a unit just to bring them around here, so yeah. they were there. But uh, 
failed that order, so he just joined them at the back. Can't think oh, of you, you just did the rally. He just did the rally. I can't think of a Burgundian name. A Burgundian name. That Charles. Guy, Charles has just Charles the Bold has just um, rallied them, so they're no longer shaken. You're, you're denying me points now, essentially. Well, thematically, so I can shoot better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'm also denying you points. And then over here, made my roll for a charge, so I've charged into your uh, bit of bow, but you managed to turn to face, obviously now you're disordered. Yep. Uh, and then I was able to come and rally over there. Over there, so again, reducing. <laughs> reducing my points, but also allowing, although to be fair, I, I don't know. You could, well, you could shoot these. Yeah, um, okay. What do you want to fire with first? The cannon. The cannon, okay. <laughs> so the cannon's shooting at, at William Parr's unit. Yeah. So you're going to get two dice yeah. hitting on fours. Oh, it's a break test. And a six so a save of six. No, so a casualty. So I've gone over anyway. Yeah, so and a break test. Okay, so let's go with these. Yep. Yeah. I'd say you could just pick. Oh, I'll go for the cannon. Yeah, because you're going to be minus one to shoot them. So uh, three dice hitting on fours. It's obscured for the cannon because. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah fair so enough. Yeah, so hitting on fives, re rolling one. Oh, break and test. a break test. So two saves to the cannons. No, no uh, sixes. No, no. Was it? No, no there was no sure, armor. Sure there was no, armor. no, there was no armor. You're right. There was no armor. He does have to take, uh, but he's an infantry when it comes to raking break tests. Yes. Damn it. Right. Uh, what's next? So the Suffolk unit at the shaking unit. Okay. So it's just force. Rerolling one. Okay. Just one save of four. I only need one re oh. Saved. Okay. And then them at. Okay, oh, well. you need fours. Rerolling one. That's better. I'm taking a break. three saves of four and a break test. Oh, two saved, one casualty, which has put me over, and a break test. Just my small unit. We'll just have to shoot. Oh, over these guys unit. over here. Guys taken uh, it's just going to be four, two, two dice. It's a small unit hitting on fours. Rerolling one. Oh, no. Oh. No. There's always a chance. That's the problem, isn't it? There's always a chance of me running. So fours. Saved them both, but a break test. Um, is that? Yeah, that's it. We'll start there because I ran out of marbles. I'll start there. So this unit, two d six straight don't up. Need a double one. No double one. <gasps> that's a retreat. a retreat. That's a retreat. I think they're going off the board. They'll be going off the board. They've retreated off the board. So it's all how things are going. They count towards your uh, your stuff at the end of the day. Uh, right, the next break test. So these guys here is one in excess. So two d six minus okay. one. They've done pretty well. They were the only unit in the middle for. Uh, six, that's a retreat disordered. All right, so I am well and truly getting pushed back into, into this little uh, pocket in the middle. Next break test. These guys, 2d6 minus one for them. They're fine. Uh, no the cannon with no modifier. So 2d6 straight. They're fine Excellent. as well. Excellent. So there we go. That's the end of the shooting. So we just come into the combat. We have one, just two, two, just two. So which one do you want to start Let's with? start over here because... Okay, so you've got your scurriers who are coming in with six attacks hitting on threes. I've got seven attacks hit on fives because I'm disordered. Go on. Just three. Just three. Okay, I'm hitting on fives. Just one. Two. 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 So you need two saves of five. One, and I need three saves of four. Uh, two. So I've lost combat by one. So it's, uh, I am shaken now. No, yes, I am. Yet yeah, 2d6 minus uh, one for my roll. Seven, it's a retreat disordered. Okay, Robin is elected not to follow up, um, but he is shaken. Uh, the other combat, so over here. So Robin, you're going to get seven attacks hitting on threes for charging. I've got seven attacks hitting on fives because I'm shaken. Uh, so you're hitting on threes. Oh, six. Six, I'm hitting on fives. Two. two. Okay. So you need two saves of four. One, One casualty, so you're shaken. Me. I need saves of four. Uh, two. So four. Uh, I've lost a combat by three, so 2d6 minus three. They're gone. Yeah. They are gone. Yeah. Right, okay, let's just get tidied up. Okay, so there we are. That is the end of Robin's turn six of the uh, the Essex Suffolk Alliance or whatever we're, whatever we're calling it. Um, one, two, three, it ends. Four, five, six, it carries on. And that's it. That is the end of the game. To be fair, I don't think there's a lot I can do. I, I occupy this <laughs> small area here. 
what we'll do is we're going to go away we're going to work out the points and the victor and then we'll just uh, wrap up with our thoughts on the game and um, and how it played um, straight out the book okay so there we go we've added up the points and the Neville forces, so myself, has finished on 10 points. Uh, I destroyed three of Robin's units, plus I killed one of his commander. And we always say, um, if you watch our previous games, we always say that a commander is worth as many points as his combat bonus, and Suffolk was two. And I've shaken two of his units for a total of 10. Robin has destroyed three of my units, and then one ran off the board for a total of eight. And then there's nine... Uh, 9, 10, 11, 12. So Robin finished on 12. So it is a draw. We always say it's got to be clear by three points to see a winner. But looking at it, I, I am, this my division here was broken. Uh, Warwick's was close to being broken. I don't think Warwick... No, Warwick only has one unit that isn't... Um, so I think if we had gone into another turn, I think Suffolk well and truly would have seen me off the board. Plus, you've rampaged the whole way across the board and I occupy this tiny little horseshoe at the back. Um, of course, this was our first game using uh, the second version of Hail Caesar. Robin, you got any thoughts on it? Because obviously we played a lot of um, the original yeah, I, one. I really like the new commander and general rules it feels like you can have some really cinematic moments especially with the follow me follow me yeah follow me rule um i really like that again you have to be careful how you use it because you end up you can end up with your with your commander <laughs> on his own it, yeah again you said it when we were looking at the rules when we were off camera it very much evokes that idea of Alexander and his companion cavalry grabbing them and charging, you know, on, on, on the flank or Edward, you know, in the Wars of the Roses grabbing his, you know, Knights of the Body and, and charging into, or yeah. Richard III in the Wars of the Roses ch charging off. Um, the other commander orders didn't really come into it. The rat rally, which we've always used, and there's another one where if you have a broken division and units are retreating, a commander can essentially nab a unit into his division and um, get them fighting again, but that didn't that didn't occur um, in in this game. No, and obviously the unit profiles we've, we've been using your heavily tweaked one yeah. for so long. It was different using, <laughs> using uh, the, the bow range being less. Than the, the bow range was more. No, because we played twenty four. We played eighteen for it. Oh, did we? No, we played eighteen the Crusades. We played eighteen the Crusades. That's it. Sorry, yeah, yeah. So we played twenty four. And it, um, it just messes in my head because I'm used to twelve being half range rather than twelve being. Yeah. But that the twenty inch twenty four inch doesn't make a difference. No, that, um, I that cannon work quite well. The cannon work quite well. I just want. I, I just have a. Uh, <laughs> I, I just. I just have a need for them to be able to blow up, um, and and the rebuilder Quinn as well. I, I was. I was quite pleased. You know, that, well, that, that, that's in, for that. It feels thematic. It, it does, but I still think they should be able to blow up. Yeah. <laughs> so we will be adding that back in. We were using the list that's in the uh, in the core rulebook, um, which was initially based on a list that was released by Rick Priestley a while ago on the Perry Miniatures Facebook page. Not a lot has changed on it. They added some other units on there. Um, and the, uh, there's a few things on there that I think I, personally I, I would probably change. And that's the great thing about Hail Caesar. It's a, it's a sandbox game and you can change things. Um, one of the things which I, I think that hampered me slightly was was that in on that list night uh, foot knights and men at arms are if you're only playing by that list are only available as a small unit and as you pointed out there became a point where it's like well i might as well just just charge I was off charging with a bill and bow unit than i was shooting at them yeah because or you're better off charging with a bill and bow unit than you are with a men at arms yeah. unit the, the added the re-roll and the they're not any more resilient other than that they get a stubborn, a stubborn reroll. But that's the great thing. You can add these little special rules. Personally, I prefer reducing the armor of the bill and bow units to five. Um, as you can see, we still have a lot of units on the table. Um, most of them are shaken, but it definitely felt um, a bit harder putting casualties on. The um, losing some of the hit modifiers um, so not yeah, so not no the positive. there's no plus one. It did fit. I, I did feel. That the archers were having a harder time of it, but I actually enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, with the added um, 
sort of minus one for shooting at the heavy infantry, which I do like. It's not just shield arm troops now to the front. I, I think that's good. I, I really like that, the idea of them pinging off. Oh, yeah, because the, the whole reason they stopped using shields was because they didn't need them. Exactly. So, so I think that's that's cool. Um, I think we're going to need, need a couple more games. I think the next time we play, we're probably going to um, personally bring back some some of the sort of abilities for the commanders that we added. Yeah, the personalities. Like I'm, when I, it's a period of personalities, you need... Personalities, personalities. yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But absolutely brilliant. Um, I, I say that, yeah, really, really good. Really, really good fun. The book's much nicer to flick through as well. It was easy to find everything. Yeah, yeah. It was easy to find everything. So, no, we really, really enjoyed it. Um, we will be playing more Wars of the Roses. Um, we, uh, we're trying to convince uh, one of our other friends to get on and make a force. So um, we'll see if we can get him along and, uh, and join in in a, in a bigger game. Let us know what you thought down below. Thank you for taking the time um, to watch this. I think myself and Robin, if we're going to do some Hail Caesar, we're going to be getting back on with the Crusades. Yeah. And um, what we would like to do is some link battles in that, uh, gradually building up um, a bit of a uh, narrative the way we did with the last Wars of the Roses campaign. I mean, come on, who wants to see a siege? But, uh, but set sort of near Antioch or uh, Jerusalem. Anyway, thank you again all for watching. Uh, remember to check out the other videos on the channel as well. If you've got any questions, you can um, pop, us, pop a comment down below. Like the video if you liked it. Um, and um, what we'll be doing for the first Crusade video, um, I'll have a chat um, to all the channel members. Put up some votes so you can decide on, um, on what the first game me and Robin should play is and um, make some other suggestions for how we should run that narrative campaign. Anyway, I've probably wrapped it on long enough. Thank you very much once again for watching and we will see you all again soon. Take care of yourselves. Later. See you later. Bye-bye.